We are doing exercise 7a and in this video I'll be answering question 5c which says for y equals f of x equals x squared sketch the graph of each of the following labeling axis intercepts and here we've been given y equals f of x plus 3 minus 5. So I've broken this down into a few steps we will first find our newly transformed rule we will then find the x-intercept then the y-intercept and then the last thing that we will do is find is give it a sketch and as you can see i've already sketched y equals x squared because that is what they have originally given us so they have told us that y equals f of x equals x squared so let me write that in y equals f of x equals x squared so now let me consider this which is they've told me that y equals f of x plus 3 minus 5. So what does this mean? So we know that our function here is x squared. So here we had x and we had an x here. Well, if we have x plus 3, that means we'll be putting x plus 3 into our x spot, which will give us x plus 3 squared. And then we're going to minus 5 from it. So that tells me that y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. So this is what I'm trying to sketch. And hopefully, just by looking at this, you can recognize what our transformations will be. This plus 3 here is going to mean that I'm going to take my graph and shift it 3 units in the negative x direction. So 1, 2, 3. And this minus 5 here is going to mean I'm going to take my graph and move it five units in the negative y direction. So I'm going to move it five units down to here. Perfect. So no longer do I have y equals x squared. I now have y equals x plus three squared minus five. So let me write that. Let me put that here. Actually, can I, look at that, I can shrink it. Magic of computers. Perfect. Let me now find my second step, which is the x-intercept. So I will begin by writing down what I know, that y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. To find my y-intercept, to find my x-intercept rather, to find my x-intercept, I let y equal 0. So I get rid of that. I put in 0. And now I will rearrange to find x. I will plus 5 to both sides. So I'll get 5 equals x plus 3 squared. I will then square root both sides to get rid of this squared here. So I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of 5, which is going to be equal to x plus 3. I will then minus 3 from both sides. So I'm going to get minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 equals x. So these are going to be my x-intercepts. And as you can see, I have plus or minus, which means I'm going to have two, which makes perfect sense when I come and look here. So now it's going to be the question, well, which is going to be my plus and which is going to be my minus? Well, the one that is more negative, so my minus here, will be the furthest one. So here, right here, will be, let me do this in a thinner pen. This will be minus three, minus the square root of five, zero and that's because it's going to be more negative and then this one here is going to be minus three plus the square root of five zero so that one is there and that one is there so notice you don't have to know what the square root of five is in order to answer this question the only thing you need to know is what is more positive and what is more negative now let's find what my y-intercept will be so I begin by writing down what I know, which is y equals x plus 3 squared minus 5. Then to find my y-intercept, I let x equal 0. So I come here and I'm going to put a 0 there. And then I'm going to go, all right, 0 plus 3 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to have y equals 9 minus 5. And 9 minus 5 is 4. So y equals 4. So that tells me that my y-intercept will be 4, which will be right here. So that checks out. So that will be 0, 4. 
So I have my newly transformed rule. I have given it a sketch. I have found my X intercepts and my Y intercept. Hopefully this was helpful in answering question 5C of exercise 7A.